Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Fields here. I thank God for this, another opportunity to come to you and to go into God's word, sharing his word. The Lord has been good. He has been faithful to us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, I realize this is the night before Thanksgiving and uh, many of us are preparing meals for tomorrow. Got that turkey in the oven and uh, collard greens on top of the stove and you're just getting ready. So I'm not going to hold you long, uh, but I wanted to continue the series that we have been teaching on divine healing. This will be part two. And remember, last week we were uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 through 22. And the subject was simple, sickness and divine healing. Uh, if you missed that lesson, of course, you can go back on uh, our Facebook page or even our YouTube page um, and look that particular lesson up. Or if you have your cell phone and you have that uh, app, that church app, and I'll pull up the name for you, um, Yes, that church app, uh, and you can pull up uh, the lesson from last week. Uh, all of that is on uh, the church app, and our technician will make sure that that information is on the screen for you. You can download or upload that app to your smartphone, uh, and you have all of our Sunday morning worship services and all of our Bible studies right in the palm of your hand. You can also give, pay your tithes and offerings with that app uh, to Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. And again, if you're with uh, Refuge Temple Annex in the Bronx, you still uh, should use Givelify. Uh, but if you have that mobile app right in the palm of your hand, you'll have... Uh, our sermons, our Bible studies are right in the palm of your hand. I thank God technology is something else, isn't it? Well, um, let's have a word of prayer so we can go on to part two. Father, we love you and we thank you for your grace, your mercy. You've been so good to us. Thank you for bringing us together, strengthening us and keeping us and watching over us. Bless this lesson on tonight everyone that connects with us. I pray that you'll put a special blessing in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is part two of our uh, healing series, um, and we're in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 4, verses 44 through 46, rather, through 54. St. John, the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verses 46 through 54. And the title of the lesson tonight is Taking God at His Word. Healing. Talking about healing. Um, and the lesson title is Taking God at His Word. Familiar story. I'm sure you'll recognize it as soon as I start reading. It reads like this. So Jesus came again unto Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus uh, said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. But the nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, or my son die. Or my child die. And Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth. And 
himself believed, I love this part, and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. Beautiful story. It happens to be one of my favorite stories, one of my favorites in the Bible. Verse 50 is the anchor scripture. Jesus saith unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. That was the word. God gave him a word. Go thy way, your son lives. And the man believed the word. And the man believed the word. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. I love that. And the man believed the word. My Lord, I want to read that one more time. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken. And lesson title is Taking God at His Word. Now, we're in our second uh, investment into this series on healing. And um, it just happens that we're talking about the very second miracle that was performed by Jesus Christ. Um, remember, uh, the first one was in Canaan where he had turned the water into wine. While he was there, uh, a certain nobleman, a courtier, sought him out. And this man lived in Capernaum. Now, we know that Capernaum was a place, an area where Jesus spent a lot of time. And performed quite a few miracles. Um, but this man, this nobleman, had a son that was sick. He was at the point of death. He was very ill. So he makes a journey to go and see Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, when he finds Jesus, he pleads with him, Father, please, Lord, please come and see about my son. Uh, he's on the brink of death. Heal my son. But Jesus, however, startles him by giving him a no. And yes, sometimes when we ask the Lord, uh, he can say yes, he can say no, and he can say wait. Hallelujah. But Jesus says, no, I won't come to your house. No, go your way. Hallelujah. Your son lives. Your son will live. Hallelujah. And the nobleman took Jesus at his word. I could really close the book there. He took Jesus at his word and turned homewards. But on his way, according to what we just read, he runs in to some of the servants of his home who tells him that a miracle had taken place. Your son is alive. Your son is alive. Now, uh, when they compare notes, and he's asking the question, uh, when did things start turning around? He said yesterday, about the seventh hour of the day. And he discovers that it was when Jesus spoke those words, your son is going to live. That's when the fever broke. Hallelujah. That's when things turned around. I submit to you, even before we get into the meat of this lesson, all you need is a word from the Lord. Yes, uh, God is waiting for an opportunity to turn your situation around, and all you need is a word from the Lord. Jesus said, your son is going to live. And when Jesus said that, the Bible says he took Jesus at his word. He believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and went on his way back to his house. Hallelujah. As a result of all of this, his house believed. And we're going to get into that house was watching the situation. And they saw that Jesus, hallelujah, all he had to do was speak a word. Uh, and his word was believed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And his word came to pass, and they all believed. Now, in this miracle, we have a great illustration of the way sinners come to Jesus Christ for their salvation. So let's, let's study this incident a little deeper uh, from a point of view, from that point of view, I should say, and notice a few things. Hallelujah. Number one, I noticed, or we should notice, that the man was overwhelmed 
uh, with a great and desperate need. Obviously, he loved the son very much, and he was desperate. If, if, if Jesus doesn't do something about this, my son will die. So he knew this is a do or die situation. I need the Lord to do something for my son. His son was sick. John 4 and 46, Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. He was close to death. Because verse 47 said, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So he knew, my son is at the point of death, and he pleaded with Jesus, come down before my son dies. Come down before my son dies. Verse 49, the nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down here. My child die. Come. This is desperate. I don't know what else to do. My son is going to die. He's sick. And this is how the work of grace begins in the hearts of people. When we're brought into a place uh, of urgency, an urgent need, and and uh, you realize that no one else can help you but Jesus. Hallelujah. And you're willing to turn everything over to him. Hallelujah. You've tried everything else. Try Jesus. And uh, perhaps there were times where we denied or even dishonored uh, the Lord's name. But when our need was great, we were driven to him. I know in my personal life, because the need was great, I was driven to him. Uh, remember, even with the prodigal son, he had money and he had friends, but when his money ran out, hallelujah, yes, his money and friends had run out, uh, and he was in need now. The Bible says he came to himself, and he had to come back to the Father. Uh, it was then that he was ready to return when he lost everything, when he was desperate. Let's look up Luke chapter 15. Um, verses 17 through 20, it says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, father, I've sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy higher servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great far off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I want to read Psalms 55 and 19. I'm in the book of Psalms. Psalm 55, verse 19. God shall hear and afflict them, even he that abideth of old, because they have no changes. Therefore, they fear not God. So sometimes... Sometimes our journey uh, to the Lord begins when we realize how great our need is for him. Yes, I need his help. I need his strength. I need his keeping power. I need his salvation, whether, and whether it's material, physical, uh, but above all, when you feel a need for spiritual help. Hallelujah. So a lot of times it's not just physical healing that we need, but it's a spiritual healing. My Lord, I felt that in my spirit. So he was overwhelmed with the great need. My son is at the point of death. So the next thing we pull out from this is also that he sought for someone to help him in his need. And he heard about Jesus. No doubt he heard about what he had did. Uh, at the wedding, uh, he, ha he turns water into wine. Um, let's go to verse 47, St. John 4 and 47. It says, and when he heard that Jesus come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So verse 47 tells us that he heard that Jesus was in town. 
Uh, but uh, my question would be, well, who told him about Jesus? Was it someone who had been present at the wedding in Cana, uh, who had seen the water turn into wine, perhaps even tasted it, and said, wow, this is better than what they were giving us in the first place? Surely, uh, if this man, Jesus, can turn water into wine, might have been what he said. We don't know who told him or what actually was said to him. But uh, here, you'd have to say, surely if Jesus can turn water into wine, he can heal your son. If he can do that, certainly he can handle this. And people will do anything when they're really in trouble. Yeah. Perhaps he may have had other opportunities to come to the Lord, uh, but now this was something he, he had to come to Jesus because he knew no one else can do this but Jesus. This is troublesome. This is, this is an impossible situation. But if Jesus can do that, he can do something about this. And this is, now, people will do anything. It's true uh, when they're really in trouble. And I have to make some comparisons because uh, this is uh, why some people have turned to Christian science or spiritualism and other false teachings. What a blessing it is, however, when we hear the word of God and our souls are ready, hallelujah, to hear what Jesus has to say. And I, I submit to someone who may be listening, perhaps it's a family member that's visiting, you've tried everything else, you need to try Jesus, because this is how faith begins. Trying Jesus, hearing what he has to say, and taking him at his word. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then, you remember this, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I submit to you, all you need is to hear his word and take him at his word. Take him at his word. It's C.H. Spurgeon, who was a, uh, a theologian and a preacher in the 18th and 19th century. Uh, he says these words concerning this story that we have read. He says, first the nobleman's faith was just a spark. Then it became a fire, then a flame, and then a mighty conflagration. Hallelujah. It went from being a spark to being a humongous fire. Hallelujah. So let's take something else out of this story that we've read. Immediately, the nobleman heard of Jesus. Immediately he heard of Jesus, and he sought him out, and he comes to Jesus. So we have to seek the Lord out, and we have to come to him. Verse 47 again of chapter 4, the gospel according to St. John, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea unto Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. So the nobleman goes to Jesus. Now understand, because he hears that Jesus is in Judea and he comes from Capernaum. I'll read it again, just to make it clear. John 4 and 47, when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. So I want you to understand, though, that where the nobleman had to come from, it was a 25-mile journey. So there were no trains, no plane. Hallelujah. So most of all, uh, I don't know if he had a horse. Most, most people during those times walked wherever they had to go. He had a 25-mile journey to get to Jesus. And he had to travel over rough terrain. Mm-hmm over rough country, and his faith, his faith was in action. Hallelujah. No matter how rough it looks, how long it takes, I've got to get to Jesus. His faith, his faith perhaps was only like a grain of mustard seed. 
Uh, remember Matthew 17 and 20. And Jesus said unto him, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Um, and some people might read that and say, Well, is, is that really enough? But Jesus said, If you have faith like mustard seed, Nothing shall be impossible unto you. And no doubt as he traveled those 25 miles, I'd like to think that on his way there, he said he turned water into wine. If he can do that, I believe Jesus can heal my son. And have you, have you ever reasoned like that? I know I have. Lord, uh, you've healed me before. Yes, you have. And if you healed me then. I, I know that you can heal me now. Lord, you touched me before, and I've seen you heal others. And I heard you say there is no respect of a person. I heard you say that you can do it, and you've done it for others. Hallelujah. Remember that song, There Is No Secret, What God Can Do, What He's Done for Others, He'll Do For You. I love that song. Hallelujah. And I believe he reasoned like that. If he could turn the water into wine. Uh, so the nobleman is coming to Jesus. If only people would do just like that. Hallelujah. If only people would come to church for Jesus. Not for the preacher. Not for the choir. But for Jesus. Hallelujah. If only you would come for Jesus. If you would seek him. And take him at his word. So, the other thing we have to pull out of this is having come to Jesus and confessed his need. He came to him and said, Lord, this is, I need you to heal my son because he's on the point of death. Hallelujah. I'll read it again. Verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee. Now, he's in Capernaum. 25 mile journey, I'm going to get to Jesus. And he goes 25 miles and says, hallelujah, come down because my son is dying. Hallelujah. We told that he begged. It was, there's no pride here. I need you. He besought him that he would come down. Very strong word to beg, but verse 47 implies it here. Uh, that uh, Jesus, he hears that Jesus is in Judea and he went down to him and besought him. He besought him that he would come down. Uh, the nobleman emphasizes the urgency of the situation. My son. So perhaps there was panting in his, in his talk and uh, you could feel the desperation and the urgency. My son is sick. He's going to die. He's close to death. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And when he says this, this is, listen to this. Then Jesus says unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. This was his response. Except you see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. Now, I'm, I've, I've looked at this several times. I believe you know, and the Lord knows when you're going to come to him. He knows the motive behind why you come to him. He knows the motive behind the motive. So I think he's speaking deeply into the heart and mind of this nobleman. Hallelujah. Because perhaps in his mind, uh, he was one of those that was saying, seeing is believing. And if it wasn't him, perhaps those who were attached to him. We've heard this, but we need to experience it ourselves except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe hallelujah my son is close to death and jesus said well except you see me do this you won't you won't believe uh and he's testing him in the midst of what i'm going through he's testing me yeah and his response sir come down come on down because if you don't come my son is going to die. Verse 49 says it like this. The nobleman says unto him, sir, come down, er, my child 
die. And the way, uh, and the way to receive help from God is, is, is simple. Ask him. Ask, and it will be given unto you. Put it in the comments section. Ask God for it. Ask him. Hallelujah. Ask him. Ask him. He wouldn't stop asking. Ask him. Hallelujah. Ask and it shall be given. Let's, let's go to the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 11, verses 9 through 13. And I say unto you, this is Jesus talking. This is the word of God. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Hallelujah. Now, we read that carefully. Now, if it is salvation you need, if it's salvation that you need, then there is a special promise that God gives for those who are seeking salvation. Listen. If you don't have salvation, then you are sick. Yes, you are. Sin is a sickness. Romans 10 and 13. Let's, let's, let's read this. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, that is a promise. And the promise that I just read is wonderfully illustrated in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 18. Let's go there. Luke chapter 18, verses 41 through 42, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith have saved thee. I can take you to chapter 23 of the gospel according to St. Luke, verses 42, 43. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me. Now this is at the cross in paradise. Yes. When Jesus says something and he says something and he says something, I know I'm repeating myself. When Jesus says something, you better believe he's going to do what he says. Matthew 15 and 25. And then verse 28. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And let's go down to verse 8. Matthew 15 and 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. You better take him at his word. Hallelujah. Don't shrug his word off. When Jesus speaks, it must come to pass. It must be. Let's go to Matthew 14, verses 30 and 31. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Remember, this is Peter walking on the water and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him. Glory to God. O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Jesus is questioning Peter. Why, why did you doubt me? Take me at my word. I feel some of you are pulling back. Take him at his word. God is a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. Luke chapter 18, verses 13 and 14. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Hallelujah. So the way to receive God is to simply take him at his word. Don't doubt, but take him at his word. 
You can take his word to the bank. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So the other thing that we have to pull out of this story is that the noble man, he experienced the Lord's blessing immediately. Hallelujah. Immediately he acted in faith and obeyed God's word. The man experienced the Lord's blessing immediately and he acted in faith and obeyed his word. I know it because in, listen to what verses 50 and 52 say out of John the fourth chapter. And I'm almost through. Jesus saith unto him, go thy way, thy son liveth. So Jesus said, go your way, go back home. And he did what the Lord told him to do. Not only did he take Jesus at his word, but he obeyed his instruction because it says, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend, and they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So I, I believe it, and I read it just to you. The moment that he took Jesus at his word, hallelujah, the moment that he just let go and received the word from the Lord Jesus. That moment was when the blessing came. And, and listen, faith is not a mysterious thing. It is not some mystical, magical thing. Faith is not a mysterious thing. It is just taking God at his word. Verse 50, St. John 4 and 50, Jesus saith unto him, go your way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. Forsaking all, I take him. Hallelujah. Forsaking everything else, I'm going to take him at his word. So if we have to come to Christ, we know we have been received by him. Hallelujah. This is what I know because this is what he says in his word, John 6 and 37. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. The Bible says so. His word says so. Jesus said it out of his mouth. So we know that if I come to Jesus, hallelujah, he's going to receive me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's going to receive me. I'll read it again. Verse 37, all that the Father gives to me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And we know that if we believe on him, we've also, we'll pass from death into life. Why? Because Jesus said so. John chapter 5, verse 24. John chapter 5. Verse 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. And we know that we'll never be left alone. Hallelujah. I'm in the word of God. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, let your conversation or let your behavior be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, my Lord, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. His word assures us of this. His word is an assurance Hallelujah. We can't just sit in our homes with our heads hung down. We can't just moan and groan. And you may be wrestling with sickness, not just physically, but maybe a spiritual situation. Don't just sit there in defeat. Take the Lord at his word. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Take him at his word. He will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. And you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Put it in the comment section. The Lord 
is my helper. Put it in capital letters. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. And we know that we should never be in want also because it's in his word. Psalm 23 and 1. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. We can't just quote scripture and not believe it. We can't just have all of this word and not take the Lord at his word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hallelujah. Take him at his word. This is what faith is. I know you quote that scripture. It's the evidence of things hoped for. Substance of things not seen. The evidence of things hoped for. Take him at his word. That's what faith is. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. So listen. Let's sum it up. Because we know that when this noble man arrived home, he enters into a full assurance of faith. Because Jesus said, go thy way. Hallelujah. Your son is going to live. Go your way. Your son is going to live. It's going to be all right. And I speak to someone who's watching. Hallelujah. Take him at his word. Hallelujah. And start looking for the evidence of what he has spoken. Because when this man gets back home, he steps into the full assurance of faith as he witnesses the Lord's miracle power. And I know some of you are in that house right now. You've been sick. Perhaps you're recuperating from surgery. Hallelujah. And the enemy is, is messing with you. Take the Lord at his word. Take him at his word. Hallelujah. Take him at his word. Let's read the first part of verse 53. Because it says, so the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said to him, thy son liveth, and he himself believed. Listen to this. And we've been talking about this for a while. And I'm going to keep saying it. Why? Because it's in the word and I believe it's going to happen. Listen, it was that same hour, according to the, the opening portion of verse 53, that the man knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, thy son liveth, and he himself believed and his whole house. <laughs> For a day and a night, the man was, he was, he was sort of turned upside down. He took God at his word. Hallelujah. But when he gets home, he finds out, he steps into the full assurance of what the Lord has spoken. He took the Lord at his word, and now he is experiencing the manifestation of what Jesus said. Hallelujah. I've got proof positive. My God, there's a miracle getting ready to happen in someone's life. God is going to give you proof positive. Hallelujah. Proof positive. I want to read those verses one more time. Verses um, here in verses 52 and 53. Let's go back to it. I'm getting ready to wind up. He inquired, he of them the four, that them the hour, I'm sorry, when he began to amend and they said unto him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left. So the father knows now that it was at that time, hallelujah, that my son's fever broke. Things were turning around. When Jesus said, your son is going to live, and now he's home and those in his household see this miracle. And the Bible says they believed also. Yes, I, I trust God and I believe, and I don't know who I'm talking to, that when the Lord finishes blessing you, it's going to affect your whole house. Everyone that's been watching you go through what you've been going through. Uh, yep, they saw you go to church and come back home, but that wasn't enough to convince them. Yep, hallelujah, they watched you sing and shout, but that wasn't enough. My Lord, now the Lord is going to work a miracle in your life. That's going to break the yoke. <laughs> Bible says the whole house believe. The Lord wants every one of your children everyone in your household, to have the full assurance of faith and to know absolutely, hallelujah, that the Lord can do it. Not only can he heal, but he can save. 
Yes, they may feel like they're too far out, but he's, he's strong enough. Hallelujah. And his arms are long enough to reach wherever you are. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5. And I'm getting ready to, to uh, wind down. Um, 1 John chapter 5. All right, let me pull it up this way. First John chapter 5. Give me a moment and I'm winding down. Thank you, Lord. First John chapter 5, verse 13 says it like this. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Hallelujah. He wants your whole family to know. He wants them all to believe, not only, hallelujah, about salvation, but about the fact that uh, he's keeping you. He's a keeper. He's a God that can provide. Remember Romans 8 and 28? Hallelujah. But my God, all, I'm sorry, uh, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. For all those who are called according to his purpose. So he's a provider. He's a savior. And everything that we go through, he has a way of working it out for our good. Hallelujah. He is a God that brings security. He wants the whole house to know that. And he's going to work it through you, through your life. And through what's going on, hallelujah, when he's through blessing you, the whole house will see the realness of this God that you have been serving. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. And I'm almost through. 2 Timothy 1 and 12. For he, for the which cause also, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed. And am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Also, he wants the whole house to understand, hallelujah, that with him there is a future destiny. 2 Corinthians 1 and 5. Let's go there. 2 Corinthians 1 and 5 says, For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. So we can be sure that these things, hallelujah, we have because we're taking the Lord at his word. You can't afford to give up on his word. You can't afford it. Hallelujah. People are watching you and some, yes, are expecting you to falter and fail and give up. But our God keeps his word. I'm not a man that I should lie, neither am I the son of man that I should have to repent. And we know that Jesus, when he spoke, hallelujah, understanding that his word cannot return unto him void, it must accomplish what it sets out to do. So the man was blessed. Not only was his son healed, but because of this miracle, hallelujah. Yes, because of this miracle, and someone's watching me today, you need a miracle in your life. And I believe the Lord is going to give it to you. And when it happens, it's going to affect the whole house. The nobleman and the whole house believed. Of course they did. Let's compare it to what it says in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Another familiar story, verses 30 through 34, and brought them out. This is when Paul and Silas were in prison and they sung at midnight, saying praises unto the Lord and the and the prison shook, and everyone's bonds, everyone's bonds, everyone's bonds were free. Hallelujah. This miracle is not just for you. This healing is not just for you. Hallelujah. But it's going to affect everybody that's connected with you. Walked them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? After Paul and got through preaching to the man, the jailer that was afraid of losing his life because there was a jailbreak. Hallelujah. The power of God came and shook the earth and everyone was loose. They said, believe on the Lord Jesus. Thou shalt be saved and thy house. 
was talking to the jailer, believe the word that I spoke unto you and you shall be saved and your whole house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. When he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. I believe that what God is about to do for you in this season, hallelujah, is going to pull your house. Hallelujah. Folks, you had difficulty winning for Christ. When God gets through working miracles in your house, hallelujah, speaking a word over your situation and it coming to pass, the whole house will be affected. Hallelujah. And, this, and God, it's God's plan. It's God's plan to save families. It's God's plan to save families. Hallelujah. Put it in the comment section. I know we're talking about healing, but I want you to put it in the comment section. It's God's plan to save my whole family. Put it there. Let everybody see what you wrote. It's God's plan to save my whole family. Hallelujah. And he'll do it one member at a time. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm getting ready to have church in here. I, I've got family members that need salvation. I've got family members that are sick in their body. And I believe God is going to use the deliverance and the healing. Hallelujah. To bring those who have been pushing him away. One soul at a time. He's going to bring them in. Yes. And through that one member, he seeks to gather the whole household. Hallelujah. Listen to my notes. He has saved you in order that through your loved ones, through you rather, your loved ones might be brought to know the Lord. And there's someone who's been wrestling with the sickness. God, it instructs me to let you know I'm going to heal. I'm going to work a miracle. Hallelujah. Maybe someone else is sick in your house. God said, I'm going to do something. Yes, I am. Take me at my word. And when I'm through fixing it, when I'm through healing it, I'm going to bring some of those who have been pushing me away. I'm going to pull them close to me. I want to save the whole house. Hallelujah. Let's look at Mark 5 and 19, and I'm winding down. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and have compassion on thee. Hallelujah. Listen, this is my final word, and I'm going to close because I know you're, you're trying to get things together for Thanksgiving worship. I'm sorry for Thanksgiving dinner uh, on tomorrow, and I don't want you to, to burn anything. <laughs> let's, let's, um, this miracle here with the nobleman is, is an example of, of, or an illustration of God healing from a distance. I know sometimes uh, uh, you don't always get it on the prayer line, right? And people will flood the prayer line, uh, but Sometimes it's just as simple as taking the Lord at his word. Hallelujah. I read it. It's something that he said. It, it applies to me. Hallelujah. And, and it's, it's not always with the preacher laying on of hands. It's simply you taking the Lord at his word. Let's go to, let's go to the book of Psalms 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. That's his word. And this helps us because um, I would say just about every blessing I receive uh, from the Lord, it, it comes from a distance. Hallelujah. It comes from a distance. He's, the Lord is making intercession for me. He's, he's, he's sitting there and he hears my cry. He hears my prayer. And there are certain things that he's already said concerning my situation. And he's just waiting to bestow it in my life. Hallelujah. He has compassion. He has love. He has understanding. He is a high priest that can be touched 
by the feelings of my infirmities. He is a healer. He is a deliverer. And I need to take him at his word. He's waiting to bless me. He's waiting to heal you. He's waiting to save you. He's waiting to make those crooked places straight in your life. I'm going to stop here. He's waiting, oh my Lord, to open doors that have been closed in your life. Hallelujah. And there's some things that he's already spoken and it cannot return unto him void. That nobleman believed his word. Hallelujah. He was not a Pharisee or a Sadducee. It does not say that he was a church member. It simply says a nobleman, a certain nobleman. And when Jesus spoke to him, he took Jesus at his word. That's what I'm admonishing you to do on tonight. I don't know what you're going through. Perhaps you have been sick in your body. Perhaps someone in your household is sick and you may feel like it is, it is a desperate situation. I want you to take the Lord at his word. Confess his word. Hallelujah. Go into action. This is what he told the nobleman. Go your way. Your son will live. Hallelujah. If it's you I'm talking to, I want you to say like David said, I shall live and not die. Hallelujah. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm going to stop here. I want to pray a special prayer, believing God will do exactly what he said he's going to do. Father, you know who they are, those who have connected with us on tonight. It is our prayer, Father, that not only with those who need healing for their body, receive healing for their body, but healing for their soul. Healing for their mind. Healing for their spirit. Healing, Lord. Speak a word even into their spirit now. Letting them know that it's going to be all right. Perhaps it's someone's mother, someone's father, someone's child is sick. And Lord, they need a faith lift. I pray that you would strengthen their faith. Let them see the manifestation of what you have declared out of your mouth in their home, in their body, in that situation. Hallelujah. We receive it now and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless you. This was part two and prayerfully we will be in part three on next week. If you would like to plant a seed in this ministry, you may do so. Follow the instruction on that screen. You may give that offering or pay your tithes. Those of you who are at the annex, you can use Givelify. And remember always, if you have a prayer request, send it to us, admin at grtdc.org. The Lord bless you real good. Please have a good and safe and bless Thanksgiving on tomorrow morning. Here in Washington, D.C., we will be having um, Thanksgiving worship beginning at 11 a.m. We'll be in worship. Uh, now, everyone else, those of you who are at uh, the Annex, uh, just tune in. Uh, go to Greater Refuge Temple, Washington, D.C., Facebook page or YouTube channel uh, beginning at 11 o'clock and you can worship along with us and everyone else who has connected I'll, don't eat that turkey until you've given God some praise and some worship thanking him for what he's done there is a word from the Lord I love you and I thank God for you connecting with us on today and until next week as we always say be careful, be prayerful and be holy Shalom Shalom.